Now, to kick things off today, I want to bring on and introduce Dustin Brackett. Dustin is the CEO and founder of Hive Strategy, Hive Hub, and he's the author of Market Like a Human. He leads engaging and educational sessions and keynotes focused on the power of incorporating humanity in both marketing and sales. So Dustin, come on stage. Great, good morning, Dustin. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Awesome, I'm gonna turn the time over to you and you have the stage now, Dustin. Awesome. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, so excited to be here and I hope that you get a lot out of this digital summit. Um, like Paul mentioned, I'm Dustin Brackett, CEO and founder of Hive Strategy and Hive Hub. Uh, we're an inbound marketing agency and I'm also the author of Market Like a Human. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to engage like a human and how we can adopt the pillars of my book to support student success and career growth. So Market Like a Human was written to help businesses kind of adopt a more human process with their marketing and sales, but the same pillars hold true for individuals entering the workforce and transforming the organizations that they work for. The book is all about getting back to building real human connections with our audience, whether that's students or peers or customers or organizations. I'm also going to be giving away 10 books at the end of this session. So you can scan the QR code in the slide, also in the pop-up on your screen right now. Um, I'll be announcing those at the end of my session and during the Q&A. Before we dive into the full presentation, I have a quick poll. So over the last few years, how do you feel your connection with students and between students has changed? Do you feel like you're more connected than you were, there's been no change, or you're less connected than you were just a few years ago? I'll give a few minutes to answer that poll, but also wanted to ask a fun question. Um, to get us started here, get us warmed up a little bit. So in the chat, if you can, I want to know what your favorite weird food combination is. We were talking a little bit before the presentation started, and mine is cottage cheese, peanut butter, and granola. And I think I made a few people a little queasy, and that's totally fine. Um, but want to hear, like, what are some of those weird food combinations that you just love that other people think are weird? Um, if you want to go ahead and put that in the chat, there's some really interesting ones already coming around. Peanut butter and banana is not a weird food combination. That's just life. Oreos and peanut butter, lots of peanut butter going on. I like it. Pineapple, Canadian bacon, and black olive pizza. There's, there's about to be a fight going on, I'm sure, in the chat about pineapple on pizza. Chips in your sandwich. Hot Cheetos and cream cheese, peanut butter and bacon, strawberries, sour cream, and brown sugar. That one's interesting. But getting back to the poll. So looking at it, it looks like the majority of us feel like we're less connected than we were just a few years ago. And that all comes back to having the world shift to a more digital existence. Our reliance on technology and automation has made it really difficult for all of us to connect on that human level. There's a crisis of disconnection happening throughout the world, and particularly with our students entering the workforce. Because of our reliance on technology, so many students opting for online classes, and so many employers moving to a fully remote or hybrid workplace, it's created a society that lacks that human touch and that ability to connect even on a basic level. The solution is to introduce or reintroduce a human-centric approach to everything that we do, both inside and outside of the classroom and inside and outside of the workplace. So while Market Like a Human was written to 
help businesses better connect through their marketing and sales. The same pillars are important for individuals and students entering the workforce. Those pillars are transparency, personality, authenticity, consistency, being helpful, and community. So we'll dive into those pillars now. The first pillar is transparency. Transparency means sharing the good and the bad and giving the full picture. It, in a professional setting, being transparent in your resume and interviews and being honest and open about what you do know, what you don't know, and the plan to learn the skills that are necessary is super important through that whole process. Being transparent and sharing your ideas and feedback can also have a really positive impact on connecting with colleagues and higher ups. There's also this negative perception out there that everyone lies on their resume, right? But the fact is through the interview process, it's gonna be really obvious if you lied. So instead, we should be teaching our students to embrace what they do know, highlight that, and also be open and transparent about what they don't know, but also their passion and willingness to learn. Taking the time to acknowledge any of those holes in your resume speaks very highly to character and coachability. An example that we had recently was we were hiring for a director of marketing operations and we interviewed a guy that was really interesting to us. We thought was a really good fit. During the interview process, all of us and him included kind of came to the realization that he's probably not the best fit for this position. But through the interview process, he was open about what he does know, what he doesn't know, what he was his plan, what his plan was to learn those skills and his goals for his career. And so we didn't hire him for that director of marketing operations position, but instead we all came together internally and tried to figure out a way to get this guy on our team. We created a brand new position specifically for him because we felt like he was such a good fit for who we are as an organization and where we're trying to go. The second pillar is personality. And personality is all about embracing and owning who you are because your experience and your perspective and your values are really valuable to organizations. Diversity and thought and ideas and skills are important for all of our organizations to grow. Students often think as they're entering the workforce that they have to fit a mold or that they have to take on the personality of the organization that they're working for or check off all of those company boxes. But in reality, companies are really looking for diversity. Diversity in race and gender and ethnicity, yes, but also diversity in thought and ideas. No hiring manager, and I mean no hiring manager in the entire world, is excited about the same message and language and tone and vibe coming from every single candidate. By sharing your personality and owning who you are, you set yourself apart and become memorable. One value that I hope every student takes to heart is to dare to be different and own it. Our differences are what move us forward. Encouraging our students to embrace who they are, embrace those differences, all of that will help move all of our organizations forward and become more successful. At my agency, we have a leadership team and every single person on that leadership team started in a non-leadership position with us. But they were all, they all embraced their personality and they were all open to sharing their ideas and thoughts and experience in a way that helped us move the agency forward. They weren't afraid of asking stupid questions or sharing an opinion that wasn't well received by the rest of the team. They were who they are and they owned that and that helped us grow the agency and therefore grow their careers as well. The third pillar is authenticity. Authenticity is all about following through on your promises, hitting deadlines, being honest about your skill set, taking risks, being willing to try and fail, and even about promoting your social passions. It goes hand in hand with personality, but understanding who you are, 
and what you care about and bringing that to the workplace makes you different. All of our businesses are looking for employees that do the right thing and follow through. And that starts with building a sense of accountability and discipline in our students to help them embrace those challenges and assignments and to follow through on those promises. One of the main things that I talk with a lot of our clients about is clearly defining their mission statement and vision statement. If we don't know where we want to go, we can't get there. And that's something that a lot of organizations don't understand, but a lot of students really don't understand either. So going back to our classrooms and having them define and understand what their personal mission and vision are for their careers can help them make decisions to get on the right path to achieve those goals and to get where they want to go with their career. <clears throat> the fourth pillar is consistency. Showing up when you're expected is half the battle, especially when we're talking about a remote environment. Helping students to develop those strong habits can really have an impact on their professional career, especially early on. And being consistent and predictable is a vastly underrated skill that we don't take serious enough. When you show up when you're expected, you become reliable. And when we're talking about remote work, there are a lot of distractions that far too often get the best of our young employees. We need to be teaching our students good habits of accountability and discipline and consistency in order for them to succeed in the world today and what the, the landscape looks like today. So my agency is a fully remote business. We have employees from Oregon down to Florida and everywhere in between. Everyone works from home, but they're all expected to kind of self-motivate and they're in charge of their own day to make sure that they get what they need done so that we can deliver for clients and deliver for ourselves in a way that we're expecting to. What we've seen, though, is some employees, especially some of the younger employees that we work with, aren't really equipped or built for that because they haven't really experienced it before. It's so important that in our classrooms, we're teaching those habits so that when they get into their careers, they're ready for that challenge. Most students entering the work, workplace today and in the years to come, will have some sort of remote responsibility, whether it's a fully remote position or a hybrid position, the world is just moving that direction. And if we're not teaching these skills now, they're not going to succeed in those roles. The fifth pillar is being helpful. Every business and every individual in the world has a purpose and that's to help someone. Organizations are looking for students and employees to come in and help them achieve that. Rather than chasing paychecks, and all of us have fallen victim to that, we should be chasing how we can be most helpful and finding ways that we can provide value both through the interview process and in that role to help these organizations find that solution and achieve those goals. Being helpful, though, goes far beyond that interview process. We need to be continuously evaluating where we can fit in, where we can help, even if it's outside of our traditional job description. It's all about taking steps forward. And one of the things that I preach to my team all the time, there's some of them on the, the call right now that are probably about to roll their eyes, but it's all about taking steps. And even if those steps are in the wrong direction, that's better than not taking any steps at all. In a remote world, and even in an in-person world, we can't just look over the shoulders of every employee. We need people to have the initiative and have the motivation to take steps and to own their day. And that's not really an innate skill built into a lot of young professionals. The sixth and final pillar is community. 
And it's all about surrounding yourself with people that push you forward. Don't burn bridges and build a community of people smarter and more experienced than you to learn from. By working to build a community of mentors and peers, you enable yourself to learn and grow. And every professional in this session right now, all of you have the opportunity to be part of your students' communities. Embrace that, own that, get involved. It means more to their careers than you think it does. By pushing students to continuously listen and learn and grow, we can enable career success. Because we were all there once, right? The 20 something year old that thinks they know everything. And I was definitely that guy. I started my company only a couple years out of college, but I didn't take the time during my college years to really develop that community. I didn't have professors or peers or friends that were kind of jumping in to join my, my community to push me forward. And so I had to learn how to build and run and grow a company by myself. And I had to learn how to do all of those things through mistakes and missteps. If I had taken the time though to build that community and I had professors and peers jumping in to push me forward, I could have avoided so many of those mistakes early in my career that I had to just endure. We have to empower our students to understand that they don't know everything, but that they can find the answer to anything by continuously listening, learning, and educating themselves. <clears throat> by embracing these pillars, your students can set themselves apart, both in the interview process and within their organizations that they work for, and they can help those organizations to better connect internally and with their audience. We have to get back to engaging like humans, even if we're in a remote environment. <clears throat> so remember back at the beginning of the session, I talked about weird food combinations. You guys got the inside scoop on the peanut butter and cottage cheese and granola. Thank me later, it's fine. So that was a fun icebreaker, get everyone warmed up. There were lots of crazy answers in there. I don't know about strawberries and cream cheese or strawberries and sour cream. Uh, but it was also an intentional way for me to connect like a human and engage more like a human. It helped to humanize myself for this presentation, but it also got everyone to come together and humanize everyone that's here today. For anyone interested in learning more about Market Like a Human, or the overarching concepts. Um, <clears throat> you can visit marketlikeahuman.com for blog posts and podcasts and events and other resources that could be useful for you or within your classrooms. And so now I want to give away the first set of those books to the first winner. So um, I very much apologize if I mispronounce your names, which I'm probably going to do, but you all work at university, so you're used to you doing that. So the first five winners are Tom B. Clark, Buddy Howell, Gail Lewis, Jane Medling, and this one I'm definitely going to get wrong. I'm, I'm going to go with Zan McGivney. Um, I'll announce the next five during the Q&A session, but I'll also be reaching out for addresses to send you a signed copy of the book. And if you didn't win and you don't, you're not part of the next group that wins, we will also have the opportunity to purchase the book at marketlikeahuman.com. Thank you all so much for joining today. I hope you got something out of my session. I want to invite you all to connect with me on LinkedIn, through email, through hivestrategy.com or marketlikeahuman.com. I want to be a resource. I want to help your classes. Um, I'm passionate about marketing like a human and engaging like a human. And if I can be a resource for 
any of you or for your classes, please don't hesitate to reach out. And now I think we've got some time for Q&A. Yes, thank you, Dustin. Um, that was, I enjoyed hearing about your pillars. That was awesome. I just wanted to read one of the comments that came through. Michael said, I'm going to adapt this entire presentation and show it to students with proper credits, of course. So I think there's been a lot of good feedback in here. So we want to uh, jump into our Q&A here and I'm gonna list some of the questions um, I'm going to start with one. It says, with the rise of AI, do you feel like teaching humanistic qualities will get harder or easier in the coming years? AI is super interesting, and it's something that I've kind of dived into a lot. And there's actually in my book, I have a section that I talk about AI quite a bit because I think it is going to transform a lot of different industries. Um, for my book, I introduced or I in interviewed Paul Reitzer. Um, so he's the founder of the Marketing AI Institute and talked to him a little bit about, you know, how are you, how is he using AI to market the Marketing AI Institute? And he kind of gave me this, this story about running AI workshops and webinars. He does it every month. They have hundreds of attendees. And through that, after each event, they reach out ind individually, one-on-one -on -one, through LinkedIn. They're reaching out to thank everyone for coming, answering questions, things like that. And kind of through this conversation, I was like, okay, you, you didn't get to the AI part yet. Um, and so he's like, he's like, well, we're enabled to do that and to connect one-on-one -on -one in that human way because we're using AI to take things off of our plates that we don't need to do or that aren't necessary for that connection. And I thought that was really interesting. And so I think the answer to that is, I think it's going to enable us to connect even more and will improve that crisis of disconnection because it'll be able to take those things off of our plate that we don't need to worry about. And so it's going to free up time for us to better engage with the different humans. <clears throat> Great. Uh, Amber asked, I would love to hear more about your experience helping facilitate growth in young employees. Yeah, I, I, so like I mentioned in my career, I was a very young founder. Um, you know, I was only a couple years, if that, out of college. And so I'm, I'm very passionate about young employees and helping them to grow and find their place and find their passions. And so I think it's all about taking an interest in those people and being a mentor. Um, and I think that a lot of professors and all of the people kind of in this, this uh, session right now have that opportunity to be that person for someone. But I, I think that a lot of us don't take enough initiative to do that because Honestly, our students and our young employees, they don't really know to ask for that or how to approach that. And I think it's on us to be that for them and kind of enable that growth through us. Great, thank you. Um, another question we have is what's the best and most professional way to become a part of our students' communities? Yeah, I think this one's interesting. So my wife is a high school teacher. Um, and so I've talked to her many times about this and she's, she's very adamant about like having a very hard line, right? She is in high school. She is very much a teacher and needs to keep that very professional relationship. And she's seen other, like some of her peers and other teachers get in trouble or get into like sticky situations because they were too friendly with their, their students or you know connected with them on link or on instagram or facebook or snapchat or whatever and so i think that for that age that makes total sense i think when we're talking about college age students or get you know students that are entering the workforce i think that we can build those relationships and i think connecting through linkedin or sharing emails or like connecting with those people outside of the classroom is really important and I think that the professors and the professionals that take that initiative and 
connect with those people that way really help to propel those those employees careers so i connect with them on linkedin connect with them through email like i don't i'm not suggesting that you are handing out your cell phone number to all your students but the ones that are truly passionate and you connect with and that you see a way to help them give them a way to connect with you and reach out to you when they have questions or they're going through career crises yeah great just to kind of follow that up Barbara asked, are there any ways beyond LinkedIn that you suggest as a business owner that our soon to be graduate students network? I, I think that there's a lot of ways that we can network and there's there's groups across all social networks. I think getting involved in even like book clubs and professional growth communities and networking and things like that can all be really impactful. Um, but I. I think one of the traps is that the the ones that need that networking, the students, the young professionals are not necessarily the ones that well, they're the ones that are are taking the they're joining these networking groups and they're doing those things, but not enough of us that have that experience and have that li that life experience to propel them forward. Not enough of, of us are taking the initiative. And so get in, like getting involved in your community, in things happening on campus and things like that so that your students can connect with you, I think is really important. Awesome. Thanks for those suggestions, Dustin. Dustin, I want to give you time to be able to announce uh, the other winners before we wrap up the Q&A. Yeah. So I'll let you do that. Um, the other five winners are Krista Bodner, Sandra, I'm going to mess up your last name. Sandra Jaberg, something like that. Taylor Golightly, Mark Jensen, and Jessica Carr. So we'll be reaching out to all 10 of you uh, to get your physical addresses so we can send out signed copies of the books. And thank you all for participating. I'm excited for you to read it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dustin, and thanks to your team for helping with this presentation, and thanks to Amber for making the introduction. Um, we're, we're grateful that you were able to, to visit with us today and uh, wish you the best. Absolutely. Thanks so much.